Hi guys, how are you? I wanted to get on here and just bring some much needed encouragement. You know, I know many, many, many of you all are dealing with so many things on so many different fronts of your life. And it's easy to get distracted by the things going on in our lives. It's easy to get entangled in just everyday life. But know that we are going home. We are going home. And it doesn't matter what you're going through or how you feel. Because we can't go on our emotions or our feelings because they are so fickled. Believe me, they are fickled. I have cried off and on for a week. I have battled depression for about three weeks. But I know this battle is not mine and I cannot fight it. This battle is God's. It's the Lord's and I cannot fight this. Somebody on here needs to know that it's okay to not be okay. Just don't stay in it. The longer you stay in it, the harder it's to get out of the muck. You know, when I feel this overwhelming grief, you know, and people are like, oh, it gets better, it gets better, it gets better, and I'm like, when does it get better? It's been almost nine months, and I still feel like I just lost my husband. You know, it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be emotional. Just just don't give up. Give it to God. You know, I used to beat myself up every single time I had an emotional breakdown. And there was this one time, Anthony and I, his brother had recently passed away of a heart attack too. And um, we were going back and forth between his house in Missouri, Carth uh, Carthage, Missouri, and our house in Tennessee, our apartment at the time. And I was having a horrific episode of... GERD. Um, it was a horrific acid buildup. I have horrific acid reflux. And um, it was really bad. It was to the point where I could not swallow. It felt like I had swallowed like a, a bristle of a toothbrush or something. It went and stuck in my throat, which I knew it wasn't. But I was having these massive panic attacks. And Anthony had pulled over into a Walmart parking lot. And he looked at me and he said, I don't know how to help you. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And I looked at him and I said, just pray. And so you know what he did? He just prayed. And it subsided. And that's what we have to do, guys. When those emotions get so out of whack... So out of whack, we have to just pray. And it's okay to not always be okay. You are not a robot. God does not expect you to be a robot. But just don't stay in it. 
Because the enemy would love for you to stay in your misery, in your sadness. He would love for you to just wallow in your circumstances. Because then you're not looking at the one who can help with those circumstances. You can fix those circumstances. You know, nothing is going to bring Anthony back. But the resurrection and the rapture. We have to look for that, guys. We have to look for the silver lining. I will not see my husband this side of heaven ever again. And that's a hard pill to swallow. But at the same time, I remind myself when I get bits out of shape with grief, how much pain he was in with his RA and his OA and his underlining symptoms and his issues that we didn't even know he had, like the heart disease. And I remind myself that he's a no more pain. That he feels no more pain. He's no longer missing his mom and his brother. He's with his mom and his brother. He no longer has to think about, you know, the bills and the stress of paying the bills and going to work not feeling good and dealing with people and just everyday stress. He doesn't have to think about that. He doesn't have to worry about that. Because he's home. When you get bit out of shape like that, think of home. Think of home. Because this world is not our home. This scripture has been on my heart literally all day the Lord's just been reminding me all day that we're going to be home with him and I believe it's soon I don't know how soon but I believe it's going to be soon let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. That scripture has been on my mind all day today. We will be where he is at. We will be where he is at. We have to just hold on. When you have a hard day emotionally or physically or mentally or spiritually, don't beat yourself up. But don't wallow in it either. And it's okay not to be okay sometimes. Just don't wallow in it. You know, I think so many people have the misconception that when we become saved, when we, when we uh, become Christians, that we're supposed to be superhuman. That we're not supposed to hurt. That we're not supposed to be, you know having issues that everything says hunky dory I think people think that when you accept Jesus you're just supposed to be a-okay and that's not the truth you will have troubles you know when Jesus even told us that in this life we will have troubles but not to be dismayed because he has overcome the world and I know I'm paraphrasing that But guys, 
I know it's hard, and I, I'm singing to the choir. I am right there with you. It's hard. The one person that I need the most to tell me it's going to be okay can't tell me it's going to be okay. You know, this, I have let the enemy beat me up. Maybe they, because I'm a widow, I'm insignificant, that I no longer matter. When Anthony first died, and I was having a real hard time, the Lord told me, he goes, your husband's merely just changed locations, and he's waiting for you. And I accepted that, and I believed it, and I received that, that that was from the Lord, that he has merely changed locations. He's home. He just got home before I did. No matter what you're going through, please don't give up. You know, like that song, Weary Traveler. You know, it's, it's, it's been a long journey with many struggles and many trials and tribulations. But don't give up. Because we are almost home. We are almost past that tree line. And I can see home in the distance. We are going home so very soon. I go to bed expecting the rapture. I get up expecting the rapture. I maintain but I also go about my day knowing that at any second, any minute, that trumpet could sound. Don't give up. Don't give up. I know you're tired. God knows you're tired. He sees the tears you cry. They are so important that he bottles them up. Do you know that? And when we get to heaven, he's going to wipe away every tear from your eye. Everything you are going through right now will no longer matter when we get home. You won't have to stress about your health and what happens if you can't work anymore. What will happen to your family? Where will you live? What will you eat? Will you be able to pay your bills? None of that will matter. You know, I'm home alone for a week. And the first thing I did when my parents left was I started crying. Because it was in that moment that I realized that I was not ready to move out of my own. It was in that moment I realized I might not ever be ready to move out. I know eventually if the Lord tarries, I will be. But that's just the way that I thought at that second. But I tell the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want you to tarry just for me to get a house. Because I got a house waiting on in glory. And I don't need no earthly house. They can have it all. They can have all my possessions in the storage sheds. They can have all the money that I had back for a house. They can have everything, God, because I don't need it. And I don't want it. 
when we go home, I'm no longer going to have any need for this stuff. It's all going to be burned up in fire anyways. And that's the way we have to look at things, guys. That this is just temporary. All of this is temporary. Even our lives are temporary. But remember, Jesus paid that price on the cross, you know. And I got, I got discouraged the other day. I was witnessing, witnessing to this guy. He was making fun of this girl on Facebook. So I got on there and started witnessing to him. And I told him, I said, everything that's going on in this world right now is, talk, is talked about in Revelations. And I talked a little bit to him and witnessed about what Jesus did on the cross for him. And he basically told me that my Bible, that the Bible was stupid, that it was just a book, and that one day, hopefully, he said, I would wake up and realize that I had wasted my whole entire life. And I thought, man, man, you know, the enemy knows how to hurt you, how to wound you. And sometimes he makes it to where you don't even want to witness to people because you know 99.9% .9 of the time you know what they're going to say. They're going to mock. They're going to scoff. They're going to call you names. They're going to say you're an idiot for believing in an invisible God. How can you believe in something you cannot see? You know, um, hurt it all. What about that one percent? What about that one percent that might accept? That one percent who's dying to know Jesus? What about that one percent who's just waiting to hear about Jesus? Do we give up on witnessing to people because of the fact that a lot of people are rotten to their cores. That they could care less about God or the things of God. No. That's when you you get your big Christian britches on. You gird up your waist. And you keep on trudging on. And you go to the next person. And you go to the next person. And you go to the next person. And sometimes you might not even know whether or not that person accepted Christ. You might not know the difference you made in that person's life until you get to heaven and there's that one person. That one percent. I said thank you. Because of what you told me. What you witnessed to me when I was at Walmart. Or on Facebook or on YouTube, wherever they're at, because you witnessed and you did not back down or shut up because you told me about Jesus, I'm here. Thank you. That's why we can't give up, guys. I know it's discouraging when people laugh at you. And sadly, sometimes it's gonna be your own family. You know, and all we can do is witness to them, pray for them, and love them where they're at, and trust God that he's got them. And even if, God forbid, they are left behind, you've planted seeds. Don't be afraid to tell them about the rapture. Because when we leave, they're going to realize, oh, that's where they went. That's what happened. So they were telling the truth. Don't ever be afraid. You know, I often feel like a parrot. You know, I feel like I say a lot of the same things, but... You know, it's so important to get in people's minds that this is not our home. 
that we are near the end, that we are going to be raptured. But after the rapture, the seven-year tribulation is going to start. The seven worst years in humankind has ever faced is going to happen. You know, in the tribulation, it's for the Israelites. Yes, there will be Gentiles, but it's for the Israelites, God's chosen people, because we have accepted Jesus as our Messiah, but they have it. They rejected him. They crucified him. They're still looking for their Messiah. Don't let people bully you and question, make you question your beliefs about the rapture. But also know this. The rapture, believing in the rapture and not believing in the rapture is not what saves you. Believe it in Jesus and what he did on the cross. That is what saves you. Knowing that he was the son of God. That he was bruised and battered and beaten. And he was hung on a cross for all the remission of our sins. For our transgressions. He took on our death which we rightly deserved. He took it. And he placed it on himself willingly. And he laid his life down. No man took it from him. He laid it down. He died. He was buried. And on that third day he rose again. You know, I always post salvation scriptures in the description box. 1 Corinthians what, 15, 1 through 4. Sorry, my nose is all, ugh, sinuses. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Acts 4, 12. You know, all you have to do is believe in what Jesus did on the cross. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. That it's, it's by grace we are saved and not by works. So no man can boast. John three sixteen through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then it goes on to talk about we who believe in him are not condemned but those who have not believed in him are already condemned. And I'm paraphrasing that last part. But guys, if you don't have that relationship with Jesus, now is the time. Now is the time. And I will never stop telling about Jesus. I don't care if you're saved. What about that one person who might not know Jesus? And if you're leaning on your own works, that's not going to get you to heaven. You have to believe in what Jesus did. He completed the work. He finished the work. That's why he said it is finished. Because he finished it. There is nothing left undone. Our Lord and Savior paid it all. But don't give up, guys. Don't. I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know a lot of you, your hearts are broken. You don't know what to do. You don't know what you're going to do. You're living on a prayer, literally living on a prayer. God's grace is sufficient for us. And each day that passes is another opportunity for someone to accept Jesus. And I can't begrudge that. I want to go home so bad. I want to rest at the feet of Jesus. 
I want to hear those words. Well done. A good and faithful servant. I want to hug every single one of you and laugh with you and say we made it. I want to hug my husband again. I want to see my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law, and my friends and my family that have went on before me. We have so much more waiting for us in heaven than we do here. You know, our, our treasures should be stored into heaven and not here on earth. Here on earth, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be eaten by moths. They're going to decay. They're going to lose their luster. But our treasures in heaven, they will never fade away. I'm going to get off here, though. But know if you need to talk. I'm here. We're here to encourage each other. You know, like I said, I've, I've had a rough couple of days. And I'm sorry if this video was a little too emotional. But I don't ever want you to think, for one thing, that I'm perfect because I'm not. I struggle. I have my battles, which I don't think any of you all think that I'm perfect because of the, the previous videos I've made. But don't lose heart, goat, guys, goats, goats, where did that come from? <laughs> but don't lose heart, guys. Don't lose sight of where we're going. Keep on keeping on. And keep looking up. Because we are going home soon, I believe. And until that day, we're going to keep encouraging each other, loving on each other, praying for each other. If you see someone in the comments that needs prayer, don't hesitate to pray for them. Don't hesitate to love on them. We're in this together. And I love you all. God bless you all. Until next time. Bye.